Open source intelligence is intelligence collected from publicly available sources. In the intelligence community, the term open refers to overt, publicly available sources. It is not related to open source software or public intelligence. Definers for OSINT OSINT is defined by both the U.S. Director of National Intelligence and the U.S. Department of Defense as produced from publicly available information that is collected, exploited, and disseminated in a timely manner to an appropriate audience for the purpose of addressing a specific intelligence requirement. OSINT is as of 2005, update, defined by the U.S. Office of Management and Budget under the category of Forces and Direct Support, and specifically for the DOD under Commercial Code M320 is Open Source Intelligence Collection, processing a wide variety of vendors sell information products specifically within this category. Open Source Intelligence under one name or another has been around for hundreds of years. The significance today of OSINT in the USA is the conflict between military, government, and the private sector as to how the bulk of intelligence should be obtained. With the Internet, instant communications, and advanced media search the bulk of actionable and predictive intelligence can be obtained from public, unclassified sources. Government agencies have been slow to embrace OSINT, or believe they already have suitable information feeds from the media, academia and public records. OSINT is especially helpful in addressing global coverage, a term encompassing all of the countries and topics that are not considered by the secret or national security world to be vital, competitive, intelligence. In the private sector, competitive intelligence has become a tool for marketing strategies that focus on strategically prepared information under the direction of private companies or individuals who sell organized information to specific security, law enforcement and military industries, amongst other strategic applications, often on a contractual basis. Governments and civilians both use open source intelligence, both legitimately and illegitimately, the latter being the case with criminals who use information to gain an edge in planning and conducting criminal activities. There are still opportunities for small and medium businesses to compete in niche markets, but this too is being consolidated by major information providers. OSINT is not a novel concept in media where everyday operations of traditional newsroom methods of operations engage in useful strategies towards obtaining information for unique and original content through investigations of story leads. Absent of reliance on formal methods of obtaining inside information through legal documents or basic interview techniques. Investigative journalists use searches, databases, primary interviews, original sources, and leaks who come forward either anonymously or openly, as direct contributors of inside information for journalists. Investigative journalists use specific strategies to obtain information. Sometimes informants come forward on their own to contribute original information that might not otherwise be made available, which often directly contributes to the publication of original feature stories. Such has been the case with regard to many whistleblowers in politics, government, law enforcement and also in commercial, financial and private sectors. Risks for practitioners. Accredited journalists have some protection in asking questions and researching for recognized media outlets. Even so they can be imprisoned, even executed, for seeking out OSINT. Private individuals illegally collecting data for a foreign military or intelligence agency is considered espionage in most countries. Of course, espionage that is not treason has been a tool of statecraft since ancient times, is widely engaged in by nearly all countries, and is considered an honorable trade. Most countries recognize this, and if their counterintelligence agencies capture a foreign spy, that spy is usually unceremoniously deported or traded back to their homeland after a hostile debriefing, actual execution or refusal to trade back. 
Foreign spies with non-official cover would result in consequences in bilateral relations of the gravest possible magnitude, being an extraordinarily hostile act, even if those consequences were unofficially and extrajudicially imposed. Value. According to the Commission on the Intelligence Capabilities of the United States regarding weapons of mass destruction report submitted in March, 2005. OSINT must be included in the all-source intelligence process for the following reasons. The ever-shifting nature of our intelligence needs compels the IC to quickly and easily understand a wide range of foreign countries and cultures. Today's threats are rapidly changing and geographically diffuse. It is a fact of life that an intelligence analyst may be forced to shift rapidly from one topic to the next. Increasingly, I see professionals need to quickly assimilate social, economic, and cultural information about a country, information often detailed in open sources. Open source information provides a base for understanding classified materials. Despite large quantities of classified material produced by the IC, the amount of classified information produced on any one topic can be quite limited, and may be taken out of context if viewed only from a classified source perspective. Perhaps the most important example today relates to terrorism, where open source information can fill gaps and create links that allow analysts to better understand fragmented intelligence rumored terrorist plans, possible means of attack, and potential targets. Open source materials can protect sources and methods, sometimes an intelligence judgment that is actually informed with sensitive, classified information can be defended on the basis of open source reporting. This can prove useful when policymakers need to explain policy decisions or communicate with foreign officials without compromising classified sources. Only open source can store history. A robust open source program can, in effect, gather data to monitor the world's cultures and how they change with time. This is difficult, if not impossible, using the snapshots provided by classified collection methods. Process Information collection in OSINT is generally a different problem from collection in other intelligence disciplines where obtaining the raw information to be analyzed may be the major difficulty, particularly if it is to be obtained from non-cooperative targets. In OSINT, the chief difficulty is in identifying relevant, reliable sources from the vast amount of publicly available information. However, this is not as great a challenge for those who know how to access local knowledge and how to leverage human experts who can create new tailored knowledge on the fly. History The Foreign Broadcast Information Service was created in 1941 to access and exploit OSINT in relation to World War II. A classic example of their value and success is reflected in the price of oranges in Paris as an indicator of whether railroad bridges had been bombed successfully. The recent history of OSINT began in 1988 when General Alfred M. Gray, Jr., Commandant of the Marine Corps, called for a redirection of U.S. intelligence away from the collapsing Soviet Union and toward non-state actors and third-world zones of instability. Additionally, he pointed out that most of the intelligence which needs to be known could be obtained via OSINT, and recommended a substantive increase in resources for this aspect of the intelligence collection spectrum of sources. In the fall of 1992, Senator David Borin, then chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, sponsored the National Security Act of 1992, attempting to achieve modest reform in the U.S. intelligence community. His counterpart on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence was Congressman Dave McCurdy. The House version of the legislation included a separate open source office at the suggestion of Larry Pryor, a Marine reservist familiar with the MCIC experience and then serving on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence Staff. 
The Aspen Brown Commission stated in 1996 that U.S. access to open sources was severely deficient, and that this should be a top priority for both funding and DCI attention. In issuing its July 2004 report, the 9-11 Commission recommended the creation of an open source intelligence agency, but without further detail or comment. Subsequently, the WMD Commission report in March 2005 recommended the creation of an open source directorate at the CIA. Following these recommendations, in November 2005 the Director of National Intelligence announced the creation of the DNI Open Source Center. The center was established to collect information available from the Internet, databases, press, radio, television, video, geospatial data, photos and commercial imagery, in addition to collecting openly available information. It would train analysts to make better use of this information. The center absorbed the CIA's previously existing Foreign Broadcast Information Service, originally established in 1941, with FBI's head Douglas Narkeen named as director of the center. In December 2005, the director of national intelligence appointed Elliot A. Jardines as the Assistant Deputy Director of National Intelligence for Open Source to serve as the intelligence community's senior intelligence officer for open source and to provide strategy, guidance and oversight for the national open source enterprise. Mr. Jardines has established the National Open Source Enterprise and authored Intelligence Community Directive 301. In 2008, Mr. Jardines returned to the private sector and was succeeded by Dan Butler who is ADDNI, OS and previously Mr. Jardines Senior Advisor for Policy, OSINT Communities. Government There are a large number of open source activities taking place throughout the U.S. government. Frequently, these open source activities are described as media monitoring, media analysis internet research, and public surveys, but are open source nonetheless. The Library of Congress sponsors the Federal Research Division which conducts a great deal of tailored open source research on a fee-for-service basis for the executive branch. Intelligence The U.S. intelligence community's open source activities are dictated by Intelligence Community Directive 301 promulgated by the Director of National Intelligence. The directive establishes the authorities and responsibilities of the Assistant Deputy Director of National Intelligence for Open Source, the DNI's Open Source Center and the National Open Source Committee. Prior to the establishment of the National Open Source Enterprise, the Foreign Broadcast Information Service, established in 1941, was the government's primary open source unit, transcribing and translating foreign broadcasts. It absorbed the Defense Department's Joint Publications Research Service, which did a similar function with foreign printed materials, including newspapers, magazines, and technical journals. Armed Forces The former Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, Dr. Stephen Cambone encouraged in part by the Defense Science Board reports on strategic communication and transition to and from hostilities created the Defense Open Source Program. The current Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence is assigned executive agency for this program to the Defense Intelligence Agency, U.S. Military officers that engage in OSINT activities include Defense Intelligence Agency, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, U.S. Army Foreign Military Studies Office, U.S. Army Asian Studies Detachment, EU COM Jack Molesworth, Foreign Media Monitoring in Support of Information Operations, U.S. Strategic Command, Homeland Security The Department of Homeland Security has an active open source intelligence unit. In congressional testimony before the House Homeland Security Committee's intelligence, Information Sharing and Terrorism Risk Assessment Subcommittee The Undersecretary of Homeland Security Charles Allen indicated on February 14, 2007, 
that he had established the domestic open source enterprise to support the department's OSINT needs and that of state, local and tribal partners. Law Enforcement The Law Enforcement OSINT community applies open source intelligence to the prediction, prevention, investigation, and prosecution of criminals including terrorists. Examples of successful law enforcement OSINT include Scotland Yard OSINT, a Royal Canadian Mounted Police OSINT, Interpol and EUROPOL experimented with OSINT units for a time, but they appear to have atrophied with the departure of their individual champions. New York Police Department is known to have an OSINT unit, as does the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Housed within the Emergency Operations Bureau and affiliated with the LA Joint Regional Intelligence Center, Business Business OSINT encompasses commercial intelligence, competitor intelligence, and business intelligence, and is often a chief area of practice of private intelligence agencies. Businesses may use information brokers and private investigators to collect and analyze relevant information for business purposes which may include the media, deep web, web 2.0 and commercial content, literature, scientific publications Arthur S. Harnick, The Dilemma of Open Source Intelligence is OSINT really intelligence? Pages 229 to 241. The Oxford Handbook of National Security Intelligence, 2010. Cody Burke. Freeing Knowledge, Telling Secrets. Open Source Intelligence and Development, Bond University, May 2007. Florian Schauer, Jan Stalger. The Evolution of Open Source Intelligence, OSINT Report 3 2010, ISN, ETH Zurich, October 2010. Michael Ruffian, OSINT Training Workshop, OSINT Analyst. Advanced Techniques, Tools and Training, Spain 2010.